Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Herf Lockers special series called Scoop It or Scrap It, where Ken and I take bottles off of our bar that we do not share mutually, and we do reviews and give you a little bit of insight. There's no scores. We just tell you at the end to scoop it or scrap it. So without further ado, this week we are going to do Cleveland Underground bourbon whiskey finished with honey locust wood. Now, Cleveland Underground is, is kind of a cool thing. Of course, they're based in Cleveland, Ohio. And what they do is they, they, they take their, their barrels of bourbon and they, they put them into their finishing process. And they put different unique hardwoods in or, or, or fruit woods. Uh, and they use a pressure system to get the flavor out of the wood into the bourbon. And uh, this is a store pick from a little honey hole that I have in Connecticut. Um, I don't know that I'm going to review where, but basically, you know, I walked in there um, this last time, and I know the guy who owns the place. He's an older gentleman in his uh, 70s, I would think, who is a certified wine sommelier. Um, he's got certifications for bourbon and scotch and all these different things, just a wealth of knowledge and a very successful liquor store owner. And uh, he knows that I like to try and do different things. So this particular uh, flavor... The honey locust wood was discontinued because it wasn't a big seller. He was the only one in the country that sold any, but his local population of customers, his customer base, loved it. So he he worked out a deal with them because he has a relationship with the distillery owner uh, to where they were going to do three or four barrels, uh, and this was going to be like a store pick. So he got samples from all the different barrels they did uh, for him and a couple other places that ended up being interested in it. And uh, he got two barrels, and this was the one of the ones taken from his favorite barrel. So this is uh, batch number two, bottle number 123, 45% alcohol by volume, which means that it's 90 proof. Uh, and again, this is part of the Rare Woods Selection 2020 barrel release number two. Uh, there is no age statement on it. Um, but uh, I'll read you kind of like their little mission statement because I don't think a lot of people are familiar with Cleveland Underground, but they're a cool little shop. So using carefully selected transformative woods, our spirits are finished with an advanced pressure and oxygenation process, which adds a series of flavors and aromas never before experienced in traditional whiskeys. Unlike passive barrel aged expressions, these radically different unique wood combinations and pressure extractions are considered controversial and even sacrilegious to some. If we are branded as heretics, we passionately embrace the label. No excuses. Our bourbon is naturally colored and flavored with sustainable woods from around the world. There are no artificial flavors or colors added. This bourbon is made in the United States of America and distributed in the United States of America only. So uh, this bottle retailed for $46.99. I've never tried it. I've been excited to try it. And thank God Ken came up with this series because um, I forgot to ask him for a second bottle the last time I was in there. The next time I'm in that part of Connecticut, I'm going to go in and grab another one. Um, if Ken's interested and send it to him and maybe we can do a review on it and do a live tasting or something like that. But until then, we're going to be here. So I paid $46.99 for this bottle. And, and when I was in there, I bought a couple of things. Um, he is a honey hole for me for some of my favorite bourbons. I know he can consistently get them. He has a good relationship with his distributor who, for some reason, has stocks of different things that other people around here uh, have trouble with. So he got me this and one other one, which will be coming up in a future episode of Scooper to Scrap It, a Garrett Brothers special edition. Um, but he told me when I sit down with these bourbons, he's putting his reputation on the line when he uh, recommended them to me. And that, to me, resonated very much um, because he is a very knowledgeable guy and he thinks that this is going to blow my mind. He says that it's three times as good as... Uh, what was the one? What was the one he drew comparison to? He said, "This is three times the bourbon that um, Blanton's ever was in his estimation." I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's salesmanship on uh, the owner's part, but he does have a little bit of penchant for uh, showmanship. He's a great salesperson, uh, but I, I also know that I can trust him. So, let's see how we do here. Let's see if we get a satisfying cork pop. Oof. Easily a 10 out of 10. We're off to a great start, folks. And uh, I didn't get anything in my eye, I promise. Just a random itch that I wanted to take care of. Wow. That smells way different than anything I've ever smelled before in my life. 
Hmm. Smells like dried. Like, smells like if you if you opened up a dried fig, and you, you broke it open and you lifted it to your nose and you took that like, that's what that smells like. It's good stuff. Now I can already feel myself fangirling out about this a little bit. So I'm going to try to refrain. I may not be able to help myself. So as most of you already know and are accustomed to, Ken and I have five key metrics by which we rate things. Smell, taste, coating, finish, depth of flavor. All of those things are rated 0 through 10 for a total possible perfect score of 50. And at the end, during our normal shows, sometimes we will add or subtract bonus points or whatever just because we're jerks and it's our show and we can do whatever we want. So um, let's dive right into this. I, I'm really excited to try it, and I have been for a few months. Smell. It just smells like fruit. It smells like fruit woods, man. I'm not getting any vanilla or caramel or anything from that. It just smells like a fruit salad, basically. I'm really excited. <laughs> really excited. But I want to pontificate a little bit more. So when I say fruit salad, I'm talking, like I said, some some dried, maybe dried minced up figs. Uh, I'm getting um, like maybe a sweet, a little sweet with a little bit of tart like blueberry. And, and kiwis don't have a strong smell that I'm aware of, but uh, the smell is reminiscent to me. It's making me think of kiwis. I don't know why, but here we are. So uh, just super, super unique. Okay. Okay. So the expression of fruit is there. So it's true to the smell. But it's much, again, this is probably a little bit more of an immature bourbon. They have like a rapid aging and oxygenation process, and they use pressure to try to get the flavor and maturation from uh, from their mash bill. But you can tell that it's a little bit of an immature bourbon. It has a significant bit of heat to it. But again, as I've talked about sometimes, that uh, the, the heat that draws up this, this you know, makes me salivate from the back of my mouth because it's good. That's the kind of heat I'm getting here. Pop the cork back on this bad boy. Um, I, I'm getting like uh, like cherry and the, the toast, the oak uh, and, and the barrel. Uh, honey, ironically enough, from honey locust wood. Uh, it's, it's a really, really unique flavor. It doesn't taste like anything that I've ever tried before. It's super interesting. Um, it's not the most delicious bourbon I've ever had by any means. Um, it's going to take quite a bit to top all the Old Forester birthday bourbon. But he did promise me that it was going to be good, which it is. And he did promise me that it was going to be unique. So as far as the, the, the scent goes, um, it's it's I keep using this word and I apologize, but it's very unique. It's very different from anything that I've experienced before. Uh, the taste is great. Um, there's, you know, the bouquet, the, the bouquet there with the fruit opens right up. And then there's the sweetness of the vanilla and the caramel followed by that characteristic burn of bourbon. It's the experience that you want from a bourbon. And this is a mid-range price point too at $46.99 plus tax. But when we talk about coating, we want something that's not going to burn your tongue, but it presents itself. There's heat. Uh, as you inhale after you take you take the the, the sip and and the, and you want the flavor to stick around for a little bit and I've never really been able to articulate before uh, this moment what it is that I'm looking for in a coating but basically that's it and this does that for me um, so this has one of the better coatings that I've experienced yet in uh, my bourbon journey so uh, really 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 good so far it's just a solid solid pickup but we think about finish. The finish isn't really, it's not really there for me. Um, it coats really well, and the flavor's there, and you're enjoying it, and then it's just suddenly gone. There's no, like, lingering or aftertaste. It's just, you know that it was there because your tongue's tingling a little bit because you had alcohol in there, but nothing out of the ordinary, really. Um, it would be very average on the finish. Um, let's go in all, let's go all in for depth of flavor here. <clears throat> 
tobacco, oak, vanilla, caramel, cherry fruit wood, and like tart blueberry. It's like seven different flavors, distinct flavors that I'm getting out of that. Again, it doesn't finish well, but the overall depth of flavor is really complex and really, really, really good. This is something like interesting, like when you have your 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 friends, your guy friends or your girlfriends around the bar and you want them to try something that they might not ever be able to get their hands on. Um, this is that. This is that for sure. This is going to be something special that I'm going to share only with people that I know are real bourbon enthusiasts that would appreciate it. Uh, I'm super happy that I bought it. I'm happy to have it on my bar. And my recommendation is you're, pro you're, you're likely not going to run across this, which I debated back and forth on whether or not I should even do it for this series because it's not like hugely commercially available. But, you know, we're going to review this and this, you know, <laughs> and this at some point. And these aren't hugely commercially available either. They're allocated and they're pain in the ass to get your hands on in some circumstances so especially for me because as a rule i refuse to pay a dime over msrp for any of it so but i decided um that if you're going to run across anything cleveland underground you should definitely scoop it because they've just earned a lot of respect and points with me personally uh what that means to you I can't say, but you should absolutely scoop a bottle of Cleveland Underground. And if you ever happen to come across the bourbon whiskey finished with honey locust wood, you should absolutely scoop that thing up. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Cheers to you. This has been another awesome edition of Scoop It or Scrap It. If you like what we did here, it would really help us out if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. Ken has, we have our actual normal weekly show that we do. Ken has his cocktail series. He has his commute series, Cigar. He does these Scoop It or Scrap It's with me. Uh, there's a lot of cool content coming out surrounding cigars and bourbon. So if you want to come along on that journey with us, feel free to join us. If you like something that I did here or you want more detail or you didn't like something that I did or mentioned, leave a comment below, a thumbs up or thumbs down, either way. Um, the only way for us to get better is to get input from you guys. So, as always, thank you for turning into the Herf Locker. I've been Phil. Cheers. God bless America. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.